In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I am going to share my thoughts on the G League Fall Invitational that just completed less than about 30 minutes ago. Quite a few prospects caught my attention and caught my eye, so stay tuned to find out which prospects stood out the most in tonight's game. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see I am right here in Las Vegas. Well, actually, it's Henderson, Nevada at the Dollar Loan Center where the G League Ignite just played their first game of the season against the Perth Wildcats. It was a game that... I was surprised. I had a few questions that I wanted to answer, and, and I know not everything or not every question I had is going to be answered in one exhibition game that's taking place in early September. But a few questions and concerns that I had, I feel a little bit more at ease about them. But first, let's talk about the players that stood out and caught my attention the most. And the most impressive player for today was Ron Holland. Ron Holland had a strong performance, especially in the second half. He showed exactly why there are people that believe that he is on the short list. Well, maybe it's not a short list because it's such a wide open draft. But he is one of the players that is considered to be a candidate to be the top pick in June's draft. And I thought Ron Holland showcased the skill set, the, the motor, the athleticism that has had so many people impressed. And I'm just going to go over the numbers. He finished with 23 points, five rebounds, three steals. He was all over the place. Got beat back door on defense a couple of times, but you saw the energy, you saw the motor, you saw how fast he is. And that was probably the most impressive thing that I saw from him tonight. Now, I knew he was fast. I knew he was a really gifted athlete just because I've been able to watch him play in person quite a bit because he, he's from Dallas and I live in the Dallas area. But one of the things that I really did not consider was how good he would look in spacing, with spacing around him with an nba size court and nba I wouldn't say the Perth Wildcats were NBA caliber talent, but just a just a bigger floor, I should say. Defenders had a hard time staying in front of him. I mean, he was blown by guys off the dribble. One of the things that that I noticed was there were a couple of times where he kind of played around with the ball a little bit. And then there's a saying like, don't play with your food, which is basically short for, you know, just get to the rack, give him a move and go. And so when Ron wasn't trying to do a little too much going east and west, but when he was going north and south, I mean, the defenders had a difficult time staying in front of him. His first drive, he blew by the defender, and I forget the guy's name from Perth, but he, he blocked it. It was like a left-hand layup, I believe, and Ron was still aggressive. He continued to go at, at the defender the rest of the night, and I just thought that he really made a name for himself. I mean, there was a large contingent of NBA scouts and personnel that, were, that was here watching this game, and I think they'd have to leave impressed with Ron. And just looking at my notes, I took notes throughout the game. Like the, the first note I have is quick first step. And he, he, he made a few jumpers. Like his first jumper that he made, it was like a side step, pull up jumper at the top of the key. He made a step back three in the corner. And that is the, the skill set that I believe people want to see out of Ron. We know he's an athlete. We know he can defend. We know he has a great motor and energy and he has this competitive fire and intangibles. But I think the skill set that people are really looking for to see growth and development is, is in his perimeter game, whether it's creating off the dribble, knocking down open shots. He made a few jumpers. I think he had one shot that was a little, it was, I think went like too far left where, where the touch looked a little erratic. But I thought, he made some some tough jumpers on the move, and I, I thought that he just showed enough to where you can be comfortable saying that he's one of the, the top five players in this class. And I did speak to a couple of scouts and NBA personnel in attendance, and there are some that still feel that he's more so of a complimentary guy 
and glue guy as opposed to like a, a number one scoring option. But despite the fact that that's kind of like the, the box that he's been put in, he still finished with over 20 points and he just did a lot of good things on the floor tonight. Now the next player that really caught my attention is someone that I've been very critical on. But I've been critical, but I've also been positive in a sense. I know that probably doesn't make sense. But Alexander Saar is a player that I've just been openly raving about his talent and physical tools and how gifted he is. And he's someone that I've always felt like the talent and the production aren't on the same page. I thought that he had the skill set to, to dominate every game. Every time he steps on the floor, I believe Alexander Saar is the most talented player on the court. And sometimes he just doesn't put up the same numbers. I know at the U19s this summer, I was not impressed. I think he averaged like seven points per game, was inefficient from the floor. But tonight... Alexander Saar was the player that I've been hoping that he would be for the last, I said maybe like the last two years. He finished with 17 points, seven boards, six blocks, and made two out of three from deep. He is, like I said, I mean, I think if you just broke it down to talent, I think he's one of the top 10, and, and that's been generous, top 10 most talented players. In, in this draft class, I mean, 7'1", seven, 7'5", seven, wingspan, he's fluid, he's agile, has good touch. I mean, he showed that making two three-pointers. Has the, the, the timing and the tools to be a really gifted defender, whether it's protecting the rim or defending in space. He can score in the post, can pass. I mean, he has all the tools. And I thought today he went a long way in showing that, you know what, maybe he is a, a lottery pick now the talent's never been questioned but maybe he could be a lottery pick I believe I have my number 30 on my big board and I know it's one game and and you know it's I shouldn't overreact off of one exhibition game in September but if he continues to play like he played tonight Alexander Saar is going to be a top 10 pick. Now, he showed some flashes of production in the preseason in Australia's NBL, and he had a couple of good games. But, again, tonight I was definitely impressed, especially on the defensive end. Now, I thought he had four blocks. I counted four myself, but the final stat sheet that I have says he has six blocks. I know he had a couple blocks on Amada around the rim, and I thought that he was just phenomenal. And, I mean, it was a blowout loss. I don't know if they have the score up anymore, but it was uh, it, it was a, a competitive game in the second half. But I thought Alexander Saar did an excellent job of showing his talent, play tough. Now, I have a little bit of concern about him um, as far as just handling physicality. But I think once he gets stronger, that's not going to be an issue. He does tend to shy away from contact. So I'd like to see him go up stronger especially in traffic now he'll he'll finish stronger around the basket if he has space but going up in traffic i like to see him finish a little bit stronger but i think that's going to come with with um you know adding more strength and, and adding more weight but overall if i had to give alexander Saar a grade I'd, I'd give him an A. All right, when we return, I want to talk about Tyler Smith. I thought Tyler Smith had a phenomenal game. I thought London Johnson had a good game. I feel like he's really underrated. I mean, he got, to, he got downhill whenever he wanted, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. But next, let's talk about FanDuel. The NFL season kicks off tonight, and there are some incredible offers from FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. Right now, if you are a new customer, you can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all new customers who bet $5 will get $100 off the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So the time is now. Sign up for FanDuel. The app is very simple. It's easy to use. And you can bet on everything from the point spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. And kick off the NFL season with an offer that you will not want to miss. Fandle, the official partner of the NFL and Locked On. 
All right, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. And once again, this is Rafael Barlow. I am live at the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson, Nevada. Just finished watching the G League Ignite spank the Perth Wildcats. All right, Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith is a player that I feel like has just been completely under the radar the last two years. Was a top 10 recruit out of high school and then he went to OTE and after going to OTE he just was kind of off the radar wasn't talked about as much wasn't mentioned as one of the top players in his class anymore it's just like he was forgotten about and overall and and I'll talk about this a little bit in depth later on but I thought tonight was a great night for OTE with the way that Saar played and Ethan Amansa and I'll definitely get to him later on and Tyler Smith so I thought the OTE guys really 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 stood out in this showcase with the with the lights on them but Tyler Smith again a guy that a lot of people weren't talking about I have him right outside of the first round on my big board, and he had a a breakout performance. I'll, I'll describe it like that: a breakout performance. He finished with 15 points, four steals. He shot the he shot the ball well from three. Had a face up jumper. Made some hustle plays. He had some blocks. Um, I thought his first possession, he he came in and his first touch, he was ready to let it fly. He missed that. But other than that, I thought he had a phenomenal performance. He blocked a three-pointer. He blocked the Alexander Saar jumper. He showed that he is an athlete. He caught a lob from, from Jeremy Pargo. Like I said, made a face-up jumper, had a steal, made some, some, some buckets on hustle plays. And I thought that overall he just really – put on a, a, a positive performance in front of NBA scouts who probably weren't too familiar with this game. And overall, I think that he's someone that we are going to have to monitor and pay attention to throughout the season, especially if is able to mix their lineups the way they did today. That was a concern of mine and how are they going to keep everybody happy? There's a lot of mouths to feed. But in this exhibition game, I thought Coach Jason Hart did a good job of mixing the lineups, putting players on the floor, with, the, with with groups to where they could shine. So there are some players that probably needed to play with, with Pargo on the floor and some that, anyway, Tyler Smith had a, a really, really strong performance. And I think he solidified himself as a, a candidate to be a first round pick. Now, I know it's early. Like I, said, I know it's September, but if I had to give him a grade, I'd give him an A for his performance. All right, the next one that I want to talk about Ethan Almonds. I've also been pretty critical of him. Not necessarily critical. I, I just I had some concerns about his his fit because I feel like he's a little thin to be a five. Doesn't space the floor well enough to be a four. So I thought he was like a classic tweener. Now his his resume is ridiculous. I mean he won the MVP of the U17s, U18s, and U19s. The international resume is, I mean, one of one of the best <laughs> of all time. And tonight, I've turned the corner on Ethan Almanza. I had him as number 15 on my big board, but tonight I have seen the light. And I finally found a player that I can compare him to. He is Joaquin Noah 2.0 in my opinion. And the reason I say Noah is because he's not a guy where his game is like aesthetically pleasing. He's not like, you know, a floor spacer with a beautiful shot. He's not like your gifted low post scorer that has counter moves on top of counter moves. He's not like a tremendous athlete where he's just wowing you with athleticism. He's just a ball player that makes an impact and things happen in a positive way when he is on the court. Just go over some of the things that were in my notes. When he first came in the game, he made a driving kick assist. He brought immediate energy to the game, had a block and a steal early in like the first quarter. Now there are a little bit of concerns about his lack of strength, but but that will definitely come. And like I said, the game isn't aesthetically pleasing. But he has good touch around the rim, like like weird angles on his on his touch shots around the rim. It's like a 
a, a sweeping hook in a sense, but he can handle the ball in transition. He's a, he's a player that can get a rebound and push it and, and pass the ball ahead, or he can get a steal and go the length of the court. And that's kind of what re re reminded me of Noah. He does have some good passing instincts. And maybe down the line, I could see him as like a, a Joakim Noah type pass. If you remember, I want to say it was like the 2013-14 season. Noah was, I believe he was like top five in MVP voting. And the Bulls pretty much ran their offense th through him at like the top of the key and then dribble handoffs. And now I can see Almanza playing a, a similar role. So he's probably going to shoot up my, my big boards just because I get it now. I, th I thought the concerns were how is he going to get easy touches a as a role man, doesn't space the floor, but now I, I see that he just makes an impact. And, and some of the stuff that he does just doesn't show up on the stats, whether it's like the tip outs, the extra possessions, the hustle plays. I think he's going to be... I think he's going to be really good in the G League this year. And he, he probably won't start. I believe Eric Meek is going to start. But I think that he is just going to make an impact. And it's just going to be hard to keep him off the floor. It's going to be very interesting when they have lineups with, with Holland, Bazoulis, and Almanza. But overall, Ethan Almanza, I thought that he had a, a really good game. He finished with 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 steals. So if I had to give him a grade, I, I'd give him a B plus. I want to talk about Matas. Mazulis. Matas. 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 He really struggled in the first half. And I would say maybe like the first quarter and a half had absolutely no impact on the game. Now you saw the flashes with just how he moves and his size and he made some good plays attacking closeouts. But he just didn't have an impact. But the skill and the talent is evident. And then in the second half, I thought he really showed why there are some people that are really high on him. Number one pick high, I can't get with that. I, I, I don't see a number one pick as of today. The skill set is there, but just as far as like him like dominating a game, I haven't seen it. I, I, well, I saw it at Basketball Without Borders. I wouldn't say there were, I mean, that was like elite NBA level competition in a sense but the skill set is there the talent is there he can handle a little bit even though the handle was a little loose today but you can see that I mean there there's going to be plenty of, of, of time for him to develop as a handler he made some good passes made a couple threes and he's going to be good at attacking closeouts and then once he's able to attack closeouts he's going to make the right reach now he, he struggled defensively I thought he had a hard time keeping guards or just staying in front of guards. There was one play where he did get beat off the dribble and he was able to get a block. So I do think teams are going to go at him defensively just because he's not physical. He's not, he doesn't embrace contact. So I think that's going to be the biggest concern for him is on the defensive end. But overall, I thought he played well, got a lot of points in the second half when, when the game was a little decided. But overall, I mean, I think that he showed a, a enough flashes that you could see why people are really high on him. He had one play where he drove down the lane and made like a behind-the-back dribble and, and got to the rim. So I really think that, um, like I said, I, th I think that he showed the flashes. Had a few shots blocked. Like I said, finishing around the rim is going to be an issue. I know Saar blocked a couple of his shots. And he's just going to have to get stronger and embrace physicality because I think this year in the G League teams are going to attack him on defense because I think he's going to be the weak link on the defensive end. All right. When we return, I want to talk about a couple more prospects that stood out and caught my attention with London Johnson as one of them. And then I want to talk about Babacar Sané. He is a player that I think is going to catch a lot of people by surprise. All right, last segment. London Johnson is returning for a second season with the Ignite. Averaged about 10 points a game last year. I thought he did a pretty good job filling in for Scoot. Started the season off, I think he was like 17 or maybe 18. I mean, he was young. He was, he was really young. 
And the knock on him is that he's not like a great athlete and he needs to get stronger. I think he weighed like, they had him listed at like 175 pounds, but I saw what he weighed like 163. And what surprised me was despite the fact that he is playing against some stronger players, he was pretty physical. He was able to get downhill and he was like a walking pink touch tonight. On paper, didn't have like the biggest game, but I thought that he was able to get to his spots, get downhill. I think he's going to be like a, a good pull-up shooter, good size. He played on the ball. He started at point guard tonight. I know there was some some talk that I heard from people that they thought he was going to play a lot off the ball this season, but he played on the ball, and I thought he played pretty well. So he is a player that I'm probably a little bit higher on than most, and even though like he didn't have like a great, great game statistically, I thought he showed enough that that I mean he, he he's draftable. I think he could be a second round pick. And then the last player that I want to discuss is Babakar Sinai. Fifteen points, six boards, and he was three of six from three. What makes him so intriguing and, and interesting is that he is a physical specimen. I was speaking to a a scout. And I was like, I don't know what position he plays, but there's room for him. He he can play in the post. He's strong enough to play in the post. I mean, his body is physically developed. I know he had a game earlier, or it was last season. I want to say he had like 18 rebounds. So he does rebound, but he's like six. I think he's like six, six or six, seven. But just a physical specimen, strong frame, but can shoot the ball. He's a good athlete, made a couple plays attacking downhill one in transition can finish through contact and if he can shoot the ball the way he shot the ball tonight which you know I can't expect him to make 50 percent of his threes but I think with his his strength his athleticism and just his size and the upside and promise that he has I think he could be a first round pick he's kind of like he's forgotten a little bit he's rarely mentioned when you talk about the elite prospects on the Ignite, but I thought tonight he definitely made a name for himself and impressed a few NBA scouts in attendance. And I think there is a role for him because, again, he rebounds, the promise as a shooter is there, and then with his strength, he may be able to defend multiple positions, maybe even play like a small ball four. So I'm impressed. I think the skill set is is enticing. And so he is someone that I'm going to pay a lot more attention to because I hadn't really talked about him until yesterday's podcast. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. And tomorrow's show, I will preview game two of the Ignite vs. Perth Wildcats. And maybe I have a guest on or two. Maybe it's a, a player and we'll discuss what happened in tonight's game. Well, once again, it's Rafael Barlow and I am... Out. 